So we're just about to board the Lompraia ferry, which is gonna take us about an hour and 45 to get to Kotel, maybe a little bit less. And we're meeting lots of people. There is Ko Nang Yun, and I've never seen the boat stop here before. I think that's a new thing, maybe because they're starting to build resorts and develop the island a little bit. They stopped there, but the hotel is like literally five minutes behind us, so I don't understand why they wouldn't just stop at one of them. But uh, yeah, we are five minutes away, and we will be in one of my favorite islands in the world. We have finally arrived. Honestly, getting here is not easy. It's confusing. It takes a long time. Even if you're flying, it's still a hassle to get here. But we made it, and uh, this is one of my favorite islands. Always awesome. We met probably about like five or ten people. That's a big discrepancy. But we met a lot of people on the boat who actually have seen the videos, so that's always a cool thing. Now we're heading to our hotel, which we booked last night on Agoda. Let's hope it's good. At the bottom of the ocean. I found it a steal of a deal. It was like 43 Canadian dollars. Oh, there it is right there. That looks really cool. I'm excited. Uh, Christian LeBlanc. All right, what is up guys? We're just leaving the room here and we have done so many things. Like we've literally done all the things. Like every single thing. Ah, we haven't done anything. Watched a couple episodes of The Office and I'm feeling refreshed because last night we slept four hours. So that brings it up to almost a full night's rest. We're good to go. All right. For the next two, potentially three days, this here is the ride for 250 baht a day. Uh, yeah, the, the scooter. What are we gonna name it? Um, get me there safe. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Get me there safe. <laughs> So we got pulled over by the police like there was a big roadblock and they were pulling over everyone I thought we were gonna get ticketed because we didn't have our helmets on and like you know It's kind of frowned upon not to wear your helmet pulls us over. He's like do you have helmets? I'm like yeah, they're under the seat So I get them out put them on he's like safety first And then he just smiles and puts a thumbs up and we drove off We're just uh, at the arena because tonight. I've got a big fight with uh, I'll introduce you to the opponent in just a sec <laughs> You want to fight for views? I know, I was just gonna say, like, that's so cool that there's a boxing ring right there. Yeah. <laughs> so right now we're at La Pizzeria, which is actually a place that someone tweeted me to check out. So guys, if you ever have cool recommendations, Twitter is a good way to get at me. We're back with Josh and Tess. What's up guys, back to the vlog. <laughs> How's Thailand been so far? So good. Yeah. Koh yeah, Tao is definitely good. the nicest place I think we've been so far. Okay. I don't know, we really liked Krabi. Yeah. Krabi yeah. 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 was nice, but Koh Tao, the water, she got bit by a fish today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a freaking fish. Like Where there's money to be made, the Thai people will try to make money, and in this case, they're monitoring this road, and I was like, what's the, why would I possibly pay 50 baht a person to come down here? But then I saw their sign, and now it makes sense. You're paying for road repairs, which, by the way, the roads look great. Show them the road. So those are the road repairs, looking good. Uh, you're also paying for cleaning. I guess they missed a few spots. But you get the parkning. The parkning is included, which is great, because I got a park nay this somewhere. Not to worry guys, it's for the road repairs. I mean, I paid 50 baht, I would hope I get to orally take to the beach, but... Yeah. Have you guys seen Laura? What? <laughs> Found her. All right, deep in the jungle of Thailand, or about 10 minutes up the road in Koh Tao. You walk probably about 20 minutes to the top, and the viewpoint makes it all worth it. It's incredibly beautiful. This is one of the little hidden gems I found in Koh Tao when I was here last. I mean, it's not like hidden hidden gem, but John Swan lookout point. Thank you, John. Look, he's right in front of the fan. He's like, oh, yeah. Not even three steps into the lookout point. <laughs> I start sliding down the hill. Cut my foot open a bit. My foot has like three massive cuts on it now. I'm not gonna be a foot model, but that's, that's fine. That ship is long sailed. Look at that right there, guys. Just such beautiful water surrounding this island. And uh, great nightlife. Some good restaurants, as we saw at the pizza place. And uh, quite a bit to do here. Especially if you want to get your patty, go diving. This is the place to do it. When I last checked, it was the second cheapest place in the world to get your patty. Just behind Honduras. And nobody goes to Honduras. I made that joke last time? Yeah. 
All right, so we have just about made it to the top. This is the last little step. We gotta get ourselves up this like rope ladder, as I recall last time. Oh, dude, your foot's bleeding. Yeah, it's bleeding. <laughs> Almost there. We made it. So pretty. Yeah? Oh, my. I'm sweating. I just talked with Josh for probably about the past two, three minutes and it wasn't recording. Oh, you're recording now. And then I just hear my camera turn <laughs> off, I'm like, S SMH. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is Josh. He's got like 10 days worth of Thailand vlogs on his channel because they've gone through Chiang Mai, they went through Phuket. Yeah, you guys need to check it out, it's linked down below. And uh, Josh, you actually have a totally other separate channel. Uh, yeah, I've been doing that now for the same, same amount of time as my vlog channel. Really? Now I'm just trying to focus more on my travel videos. I don't know, your channel is inspiration for I think everybody trying to make travel videos, so. <laughs> I paid him to say that. <laughs> I actually videotaped this a few years ago. I love this shot right here. Just the path, it's the definition of like getting lost. So this is one of their local sports. It's basically like volleyball. They use their head, they use their feet. Look at that flexibility, crazy. I can't even touch my toes. Oh my gosh, there's definitely one right there. Oh my gosh, it just flew away. So that is the culprit that makes that horrible noise right there. During certain seasons, it gets even louder than this. How is it? It's not that refreshing, it's pretty warm. Actually kind of a funny story as to how I know Josh. So before I knew Josh, I knew his ex-girlfriend Sierra. And Sierra and I had classes together, we went to high school together, we graduated together. We were even in the same limo going to prom together and that's how I first met Josh was when she brought him to prom. Sierra was the first person I had ever heard of in my entire life that was able to earn an income through making videos on YouTube. I didn't think that was like a thing, I didn't realize there was the possibility of making that into a living and it shocked me. It's crazy to think that here I am, probably five years after she started making her first video, that I'm doing this, a similar thing. I'm putting videos out on the internet and I'm able to earn an income doing that. That blows my mind. Josh has also been very successful now on YouTube. He's got like something like 700,000 subscribers on his main channel and he's found his niche, he's found his audience and he makes awesome videos for that. Just so cool to think that here we are, a few kids that made some videos and turned their dreams into realities. And this is also another topic that I've wanted to talk about a while ago. Uh, I just haven't found the natural fit into a vlog. And I think that you guys enjoy hearing a bit of the behind the scenes, the not so glamorous side of YouTube and, you know, the internal workings of being a YouTuber. Because it's not all fun and games. There are challenges that are constantly thrown at us. I like to see YouTube as a tightrope. You've got so many things you're trying to balance. You're trying to balance earning an income, you're trying to balance keeping your audience happy, which can be very difficult by the way. It doesn't take much to sometimes annoy people in your audience and it's hard not to take that to heart. Uh, another thing you're trying to balance is your personal life and that's probably the most important thing and something that can sometimes get neglected. It's very challenging to, especially as a daily vlogger, keep everything in check and it's constantly a battle. Now, with that tightrope, which is difficult enough to navigate, to stay balanced, you have YouTube that likes to throw curveballs at you. I look at it literally as YouTube occasionally throwing obstacles right in your way. It sucks because even in the past month now, I have seen two very noticeable changes in the algorithm where views will just plummet. Like I'm talking 50% of the average video viewership. And it's really hard not to take that to heart because every time I put a video out, I gauge how successful was that video based on likes, based on views, and a few other metrics like comments. And it's challenging when an algorithm comes into place and there's no real personal element, but it's like, boom, based on what time you posted or the amount you posted in that week, something significant just clicked and it's changed. And that's really, really frustrating. But that's also what leads me to be so thankful for those of you who do support every video I put out, those who tune in every time, those who leave the thumbs up, you keep me encouraged to push through when things are challenging. Honestly, Laura and I are so thankful 
for you guys, Team Get Lost, the people who, who do support us through thick and thin. It comes with challenges, so does any job, and we're always trying to work through it and so thankful to be here and so, so thankful for you guys. Let's get out of the pool before we get like, uh, I don't know, dengue fever or malaria or something. Anything to add? Um, I love you so much and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Aww. I can hear a frog. Let's ride. This here is Syrie Beach. It's the go-to place at night. You come down here, you'll see fire dances, fire shows from like end to end on this beach. Lots of these like really chilled out style restaurants where you sit in these little recliner couches. They look a lot nicer than they are. You sit down, it's like super uncomfortable, but the idea is nice. You're right by the water, which is always awesome. <laughs> This is a Thai pancake. It's an essential. It looks like macaroni. Yes. Whoa. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> That's real. This is awesome. Oh. Dude, you're a ninja. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Every now and then a customer takes one to the gut, but. You can keep all of it. Oh.